Here we build distributed wind turbines. We provide wind energy and also advanced power systems designs, and we also do the manufacturing primarily right here in our Barry, uh, Vermont facility. We have not only in the distributed wind arena, but also in the utility wind space, we have some 2.3 and 2.1 megawatt size turbines. On our distributed wind platform, we have the NPS 60 slash 100, so that means that we have a machine that is 60 kilowatt rated and also 100 kilowatt rated machine. Uh, our primary markets today are in Italy, UK, in the US, and sprinkled around in other parts of the world. For the North 100, our main wind turbine product today that we build here in Barrie, it was originally started through a, a grant from uh, NASA, and NASA wanted to see if they could look at the feasibility of designing a wind turbine for Mars. They were going to need to be able to make their own power and run the station. And so it was uh, an interesting uh, challenge, and we came up with a lot of methods to have really harsh climates, harsh environments, and how a wind turbine would need to be fortified to exist in that type of environment. Now, we never did get to send a wind turbine to Mars, but uh, we did take a lot of what we learned and apply that for designing wind turbines for Alaska. In Alaska, we have turbines that are on effectively microgrids, but each one of those had generators, diesel generators that were there before the wind turbine. And then we introduced wind turbines, introduced some of the often thermal storage that would go with it using the excess wind to produce hot water. So the villages are able to save a lot of money and have cleaner energy. You know, a huge um, portion of electricity usage in the country is based on air conditioning. You could have thermal storage in the form of ice and you could make ice that could be used for cooling. The opportunities to use wind and solar to meet those demands start to depend more and more on energy storage. And as you bring energy storage into the mix, that's when you're really talking about a microgrid. You're talking about multiple devices that are designed to work together and stay balanced so that you can meet the demands of a variable load. Historically, wind turbines have been uh, geared turbines, which means that the wind turns the blades and the blades are connected to a gearbox which then turns a generator at a much higher RPM, at a higher revolutions, and that is then synchronized with the grid. In a direct drive wind turbine, which is what we're using, the, the blades and the generator are connected together, and so they turn at the same RPM, the same rotations. In our turbines, literally the same shaft. There's one long piece of steel, at one end the blades are attached, at the other end is the generator. By having fewer moving parts, uh, you can have a much higher reliability. I think over time you'll see eventually geared machines will become more a thing of the past and all machines will be permanent magnet direct drive. In addition to that we use what's called permanent magnet type generator. This is the magnets are always magnetized. In a permanent magnet generator you can be smaller with a higher power density and ultimately higher efficiency and, and lower cost for the producing power. And permanent magnets are also in hybrid vehicles in a lot of consumer appliances, like even a dishwasher is using a permanent magnet generator. You can use the generator for braking. So when you need to slow the turbine down, instead of generating electricity, you can turn against the blades and slow it and slow it back down. The generator is producing what you would call wild AC. So it's a variable uh, current. The voltage is variable, the current is variable, and the frequency is variable. It then goes into a power converter, similar to what's used on solar where there's an inverter, but this is almost like a back-to-back -back inverter. One is taking that wild AC to convert it to DC, and then the other half is taking the DC and converting it back to AC. And we can configure that with just software. One thing that's different about our machine is it's a fixed pitch. So there is no pitch bearings, there's no pitch motors. In our type of design, it's called a stall control. The blades are designed such that as the winds get stronger, there'll start to be a stalling effect that counteracts the normally positive aerodynamic effect. And so that stalling effect can maintain the machine from producing too much power. We use that along with our permanent magnet generator to change the speed. If we adjust the speed a little, we can, we can keep the power under control as well. The loads determine how much steel you need and what the structure needs to be able to withstand. So we're actually able to do a longer blade that produces more energy but didn't increase the loads, which means that the cost of the rest of the machine doesn't have to increase to accommodate these blades. We can watch the machines, we can know if they trip, if they go offline, 
if there's any problems with them. And that's through a combination of either ethernet connections or cellular connections or satellite connections. And that ability to communicate with this distributed fleet allows it to really get really high reliability and high output. Here at Northern, we also design large turbines, megawatt scale turbines, where we've worked with some outside groups to commercialize those designs. And I think it's pretty unique that our towers for the smaller 100 kilowatt have been designed using the same optimization software that would normally only be applied to the bigger turbines. So if you think about, say, cars, where there's hundreds of thousands of engineers around the world that have been working on the same basic thing for 100 years. Where we are with the wind turbine is nowhere near that. We don't have hundreds of thousands of engineers and we haven't been doing it for 100 years. So there are 100 years worth of opportunities and we just take the best ones that we can tackle and we keep working it down. It's really a system design expertise and that's something that we've developed over the years, an ability to look at a situation and design a system for that application. And it's using common building blocks so you're not re-engineering things. You're always trying to look at how do you get more energy, how do you get lower cost, because in the end you're trying to get the cost of energy to be as low as you can.